standing here in my pasture looking at an area here where I uh, fed hay this past winter so this will be about a year ago I was feeding hay in this area uh, I use hay rings to feed out my round bales and so I spread them out all all in this area here and kind of back in that area and then over here also and um, I noticed this past summer uh, whenever the Bermuda was coming in that everywhere that I had fed hay on a hay ring that the grass just would not grow and in fact um, right in front of this little cow's face you can see where the grass is kind of green right in that little area and it's kind of tore up there's bare ground right back in there um, it's like the intensity that the cows put on the land it was just hello <laughs> uh, it, it was like their intensity uh, with the hooves and the pee and poop and everything was so strong that it caused the ground to just kind of shut down I guess now I see that it is starting to kind of come back there's another bare spot where I had fed before that right there could be attributed to hogs coming in because I also noticed wherever I would feed hay on a hay ring seemed to be a magnet for hogs probably because uh, of all the the nutrients and everything that was in the ground left over from the hay from the cows feeding the hay but uh there was some video that I did this past summer where I was spraying these areas like there's an area right let's see right in there I was going in circles trying to knock down the weeds that were coming up again because like in this area here hey buddy hey buddy checking it out huh buddy can I finish can I continue <laughs> Um, so what I was what I was doing I was spraying the weeds that were coming up in the areas that wasn't growing grass so it was kind of like anywhere there's a scar on the earth the earth tries to heal it by growing something and then the case that I was having this past summer was weeds so I've been watching some of Greg Judy's videos and how he rolls out his his hay instead of feeding it on a hay ring you see down here, if I zoom in pretty far, there's where I'm feeding hay and hay rings. I'm kind of using that section down there of the of my pasture to spread it out this year and kind of letting this area that I'm standing in today rest. And hay rings seem to be what all the old farmers used in my area. But uh, seeing how Greg Judy unrolls his hay and the reasons for it in that it spreads out the seed and it spreads out the impact that the cows have on any one spot of the land has me uh, has me thinking has me rethinking the whole hay ring thing so I went and looked on the Facebook marketplace Craigslist different places and I, there are some hay on rollers that go on the back of tractors uh, and those are run around $1,500 now Greg Judy uses one that's like a pull behind you, he connects it to his ATV and, and does that which you know that would be nice and that would work here on the ATV that I'm standing on but uh, I would prefer something to go on the back of my tractor so I'm thinking um, I went and looked at my scrap pile of metal I'm I have enough metal I think to make something of my own so I'm going to give that a shot and this, this video here is going to be a, a lead up to me building my own three point mounted hay unroller. So behind these bowls is where I'm feeding hay this year and you see that muddy area right there that was where I had a bale sitting not too long ago. It looked to me that everywhere that I fed hay last year the grass just would not grow in those spots. Now it is starting to come in here in the early winter. But man, that's a long time to just have land that 
is barren, doesn't have any grass growing on it. I can I can probably expect that this next year coming up, that the grass will not grow in these areas that I'm feeding. Well, good morning. It is a cold and wet winter day here in Texas, and this is one of those days where I've set aside some shop things that I wanted to do, but I didn't really want to do them while it was nice outside. I'd rather save these kind of tasks for days like this when it's rainy and I can't really go out and do anything out in the field. So today's one of those days where I'm going to get some stuff done on the project list inside the workshop. I have two projects here. Uh, one of them is a carburetor kit for this pole saw and this is a seal kit for the hydraulic pickup on my round baler. Uh, but these two things I'm not going to work on today. I have another project that I'm going to work on. Alright, get this plugged in over here. This will be my first time to start this up for the for the year. Alright so got some schematics I guess. This image here is different from this. I'm going to take some of the uh, features of both and incorporate it in here. So my three-point bail unroller is just going to have a single bar like this one. This one here has two bars uh, going on the, you know, against the back of the tractor. But I don't have enough material, so this is what I'm going to really be aiming for. I like the simple feet design of this one. That's really why I included this one. And also just to kind of get another view. Um, so I took some notes off the blueprint of, of this one. So this main frame, what I call it, it's a four by four. Well, I, I have, well, let me see what, what do I have actually? I have two and a half, but this is some really heavy walled stuff. So I think it's going to work fine and I need to be 70 inches. So I'm going to have to weld two of these together. So I've got 53 inches. I need to add 17 inches off of one of these other bars to get me to the 70. And that'll be this main frame. So let me do that. That's the first thing. And then these side arms, uh, they're 49 inches. Uh, I'll probably just go the full length that I have here because my cylinder is pretty fat. So I want to make sure I have enough room where the cylinder is going to go to still be able to unrail the, the bale. If the cylinder, well, we'll just see how it goes. Alright, so that's what I've come up with, kind of the best edge. And I'm going to take the arc welder uh, because the arc is definitely going to be needed over the MIG to be able to get enough penetration into this thick steel. Alright, so I've got my Hobart arc welder plugged in, ready to go. And let's get a little bit closer. I put a piece of a little plate metal underneath where I'm going to be welding because I don't want to just totally burn up my table. This is the 70 inch mark for the main frame. Let's see if this uh, Queenie has enough ump to get through this heavy metal.
that was pretty awesome. That's the first time I've used a plasma torch to cut something significant like that. I was messing around with some plate metal the other day after I got that and it seemed to work good and I didn't even have to crank up the uh, I guess amperage as high as it goes so it's still got some in reserve and it was able to cut through I don't know if I've shown how thick this is I didn't do the best job especially on that last cut because I'm I'm not left handed I was cutting with my left hand but pretty good that's not the thickest stuff by any means but about as thick as I have in my scrap pile. Alright, so I'm gonna build the piece that goes on top here, and it's this um, that's that it's that piece there, and I don't have enough material to wrap around like you see in the picture. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna take this C channel and I was thinking because of the weight of the bale is going to be really putting a lot of pressure on this point here that this would be really good because it would act as gussets and I'm thinking I'll probably do one on top here and one on the bottom and I think with all that it'll hold everything together really well so I'm gonna give that a try Okay, I've got my four top piece and bottom piece with the kind of built-in gussets that I was hoping for. So now I need to figure out uh, a bolt is going to go here. I'm going to weld the plates on just like that, front, top and bottom, to this main frame. But I need to cut a hole here, through here on the underside, and figure out a bolt going to be a pretty hefty duty bolt to go right there. Alright, I searched through my pile of bolts and I could not find two light bolts. This is as thick as I had. I wish I had a, I don't know what size it would be, but um, I have two, but this is an all thread. Um, if this works out, I probably will replace this bolt, but this is going to go here and then I'll do the same thing on the other side and trim this all thread off and then like I said if it if this works out and I'm able to use it and it doesn't shear off this all thread while I'm doing a test then I'll either get another one of these or if I go with a thicker gauge I'll see what see what happens Alright, here's how I got it laid out for welding. That's how the ends are going to be held on. And I'm going to weld this to the main bar on each side. Alright, it's the end of day two and I've done a little bit of work off camera tonight. Just kind of wanted to plow through it and just get it done. So let me show you. Here's the three point hookup and then the uh, the where the hay fork arms are going to be here on either end down there so those are still to be welded but this is the where the three point of the tractor will go it's uh it's very uh i guess you could call it utilitarian you know everything's real rough rough cut but that's what this is for it's just a utility and uh given the fact that i'm just testing things out here i don't want to try to go all fancy and try to make every cut perfect 
So uh, I'll probably get these arms down there in front of the baler. I'll get those welded on tomorrow. And then I've got to build the apparatus for holding the uh, hydraulic cylinder that operates the hay forks going, you know, open and closed. Day three, and I'm working on the hydraulic cylinder. Uh, I've got to figure out, let's see, I've got to figure out this little support bar here, and then come in over that one there, and how it's going to mount there. All of it has to be able to swivel. Okay, so it's the end of the third day, and as you can tell, I'm kind of picking at this, just kind of making a little project. Uh, I don't need, necessarily need to get this all done in one day and wear myself out, so uh, just doing what little I feel like doing each night, and then calling it quits and saving a little bit more for the next day. So it's starting to come together. Um, I pulled the dimensions of those straps that are holding the cylinder, well it's not actually holding it, but what it's going to hold the cylinder so the top strap is ten and a half inches and then the strap connecting the cylinder the, to the arms is 23 inches however my cylinder is a lot longer I guess than the cylinder depicted in this graphic so if I keep those arms here at 23 inches it's not going to give me um, enough because this is, right now the cylinder is closed so if I keep those at 23 inches it's not going to give me enough uh, closure against the bales so I'm going to have to cut those down a little bit and that right there is set if I had a three foot bale my baler is a four foot wide baler but I don't even know if they make three foot bales but if they did I'll, I'll need to look at that but if they did then this would work for smaller bales um, so I'll see about that and how I want to do this but um, it's coming together. It's uh, these these bolts I found are one inch bolts. I just thought about <laughs> more about I guess that's a three quarter inch bolt, and uh, I know the shear strength of those is in the tens of thousands of pounds, and the weight of the bale is only maybe twelve hundred pounds at most, but if it's sitting out here at the end, this is, acts like a long lever, and the only thing holding it is that bolt. And I would imagine when that bell gets to rolling on the ground and doing its thing, probably puts quite a bit of pressure at the end of this arm. Uh, could be in the tens of thousands of pounds, who knows? But I feel more confident with a one inch bolt there. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. So coming together, end of day three, I'll pick up next time. Continue from here.
Okay, so it's the next day, and here's the progress I've made so far. I've got the um, bars connected, the, the hydraulic cylinder is mounted, and I fashioned up these spikes. I uh, probably need to go back and point them up a little bit more, but this is just kind of a, just a test. So what I need to do now is I need to flip it up. Um, I need to spin it around and I'm going to go put it on the back of the tractor because I need to determine where the stops are. So on this diagram, right there, uh, there's like a little piece of rebar. Well, I'm going to use rebar and I'm going to bend it uh, here and here. And what that is is stops for these bars here. I'm also going to have to come up with a leg for this um, so it stays up off the ground because lifting this up is pretty heavy so another item to work on. These hoses are a little bit too long for this application, but again, I'm just trying to make do. Yeah, pretty rotten. I'll be surprised if it just doesn't bust a leak. Uh, let's just put it on and we'll see what we get. way too long on the hoses <laughs> all right so when i was hooking it up i realized i had it hooked up to the wrong connections i needed to go to the same uh, hydraulic valve rather than going blue and green so if i run the hydraulic valve now see how I, because i don't have any stops in place this arm closed and this one stayed in place if i had stops then it would cause that arm to stop at the stop and then this arm will start moving. This is all the way out. So I'm going to mark this um, on the bar real quick. So let's go all the way in and I'll mark those points. go that way well it's the end of the day for me uh, this is as far as I got I got this leg put on so that it'll stay up off the ground that'll help the uh, the hydraulic cylinder from getting all nasty and rusty and also allow me to connect up to it with the tractor. I can just pull right. I can just pull the tractor right in here, connect up, and then I've made it where I can raise this leg up through this uh, square holder or whatever. This isn't even needed anymore. Um, so the next things I need to do are cut the ends off of the spikes and weld the spikes in on each side. Um, I'm gonna put some supports. I'm gonna put some supports back here to give the three point a little bit more strength on the bottom down there. So it's getting really close. I'll probably be able to wrap this up tomorrow and then uh, do a test and see if all this effort pays off. Well, good morning. It's day 903, and I am working on these spikes. And I marked these yesterday when it was on the unroller. And I marked these spikes and locations where I need to cut them I uh, 
set up some buckets and kind of simulated what a four foot bale uh, would be and how long these spikes actually needed to be without being too long and so I marked them and I was just noticing so I made these about 17 and a half inches long thinking ah, oh, you know I can make them a little bit longer and, and be good the direction said that the spikes needed to be 14 inches and without measuring that's right where I put the mark so if I had cut it right the first time it would have worked out better so now I have to go back and cut these uh, there and I'll get those welded up on the arms and I was looking at some other diagrams and they made these they made these connections straight if I need to make those these arms straight like parallel with the main frame right there I can just cut another hole in the arm and it won't hurt nothing probably helps it open and close a little bit better better with it being uh, out uh, just a little bit further than having it pair I don't know So that's going to be the stops and I'll just cut it off here and then weld that on and that'll be a good a good stop for me. The last thing that I need to do um, is tighten up these bolts on the legs. I just hand tighten them whenever I was doing it. Got the stops welded in and then I put these, I don't know if you can see, uh, these back braces to keep the three point good. The uh, arms that I made were a little bit too long for this main frame bar so I had to kind of come up with something to support these. Inch and 15 sixteenths is too small, too small. Well, so inch and a half is as far as I got. I <laughs> got lucky. All right, let's see if I can get this without spinning this bottom bolt. Looks like it's gonna work. Maybe he's spinning now. Try from the other side. I've got a lock washer up in there. All I want to do is really just get that lock washer compressed to keep this bolt from spinning out. I don't want to get it too tight where this arm doesn't want to move. I'm going to leave it right there. If it gets loose, I'll put some Loctite on there. So now I'm going to connect it up, take it to the back, give it a test run.
Okay, so it's working really good. Uh, I've learned that I don't need to raise the bale up off the ground. I could cut the wrap before I start ro unrolling. Um, right now, the, the arm is, is lifted up too high because I've got the three-point linkage set too high. So what I need to do is kind of reset, get the linkage back down so that it can continue unrolling. I like how that cylinder's working. That's that's doing well. And these arms turned out really good. Uh, it's just a little bit tight. The bell is about right here uh, when I when I first start unrolling. And of course, it gets smaller so that it doesn't become a problem. So I'm happy with this setup. I learned something new about how to uh, set it up for the first go. Let me finish unrolling this. Well, this is the results. This was just going to be a test run. I fully expected to have to come back out and uh, make some adjustments. Uh, I was kind of concerned that the arms wouldn't be wide enough for the bale because I did change the dimensions instead of welding a tab onto this arm and making it wide. I just bolted those arms directly to the uh, brackets or whatever. So I changed those dimensions, but for my bale size, which is four foot wide, it worked great. Now if I had a five foot baler, I would have to go ahead and weld tabs right there on that arm and make this bracket a little bit longer so that the arms would open up wider. But it worked great. I don't think there's anything I need to change on it other than maybe some new hydraulic hoses. But uh, nothing bent, that was another concern. Everything's still in good good shape, so I'm proud of it. And I think Greg Judy would be proud. Um, now it's time to let the cows over here and see what they think. About to get their first experience at uh, Unrolled Bale of Hay. They're like, this is nice, but I kind of wanted cake. <laughs> I, I feed them range cubes, and that's how they kind of tend to follow the tractor around. My wife's on the four-wheeler, and that's what I also use to feed the range cubes on. So that's what they're looking at. This first showing is not looking too good. <laughs> they'll get, they'll get, uh, they'll get distracted from the idea of range cubes pretty quick, and then get chomping on this.